Texans out here at Worship on the Water. And um, again, we're just so thrilled to see you this morning. And today is just a huge day for the ministry. And um, we're stoked and we've been in prayer for this for a while. And we're excited and expectant to see what God is going to do out here. Um, around this, the room, you're going to see these brightly colored tackle boxes. Um, we don't have to plate here at Worship on the Water, but if you have any offerings or donations, you can put them in those boxes, and we promise to use those funds to fish for people. On top, there are connection cards. If you have any prayer requests or if you want to get more involved here at Worship on the Water, you can fill that out, drop it in, and we'll give you a call. Over here, where all these people are still diligently folding a bunch of things, um, this is the nav table. And any question that you have or that you need to know about Worship on the Water, you can find over here. We have some free Bibles. If you want a Bible, we would love to put that in your hands. So just go and pick out your favorite or new translation and just um, take it home with you or give one to a friend. Um, let's see, what else do we have to do? Um, today you have a bunch of envelopes on your chairs. And Jeremy's going to talk about that a little bit more um, throughout the service. But they're love cans. So just be reading over those as, um, as things are going on. And we'll talk a little bit more about it. Also, we have another exciting opportunity for you guys to get involved here. We are launching new small groups for the God of Yes, which is coming up. And so um, there is a small group table that is right outside, um, and you can sign up for small groups all throughout the week, daytime, evening time, dinner time, all of the different options. And I will meet you out there and talk about it. And if you want to be a small group leader, there's still time, and I'd love to get you plugged in to do that as well. Every week, we give a t-shirt away to the furthest visitor. And you guys, you look like you came far for the 9 o'clock service this morning. Yeah. So, I heard Buffalo, New York. So if anybody can beat Buffalo, New York. Ontario. Manitoba. Maine. I don't know. No. Go look at the map. I have no idea. You can
in your bulletin. Now, the vocals, I'm just going to say it out loud here. They're really low and then they're really high. And it's springtime and we're all struggling. So don't shoot me down here, okay? I'm working it. But the message in this song is just, oh, oh this is a gas pump song, people. Right here. When you get to the gas pump and you're wondering what in the world is going on, this is the song. Okay. Just remember they do have the little cameras out there so if you start dancing to it, you will all run it up on YouTube, but that's okay. Might be might become famous that way. <laughs> Alright, this is You Never Let Go. And uh yeah, I hope y'all uh, there is no way I can read that. Man, I feel bad. <laughs> We're going to start issuing a little magnifying glass. Man. That is not good. All right. Well, let me just tell you about the chorus part. Maybe y'all can catch that. If you're like me, it's, Oh, no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh, no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh, no, you never let go. Lord, you'll never let go of me. And that's the chorus part. So I hope that... Uh, I'll get it. <laughs> it's not so well. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. Even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of
we're out of time, aren't we? Are we out of time? Oh. It's 9.15? Yeah, we did, yeah. What? Time is behind me. <laughs> one more? All right. You got one more? All right. All right. Uh, we got three minutes. Let's do Blessed Assurance. Since we had to teach them one, let's, let's do one that they know. Y'all know Blessed Assurance? Y'all seem like a Blessed Assurance crowd out here. I'd like three-part harmony, please. <laughs> Thanks for being here. 
Uh, our very first service, I wore my Mosh for Jesus shirt, partly because I wanted to make sure everybody knew what it meant to Mosh. Anybody know what moshing is? It's kind of a generational thing. All right, as the, there we go. We've got some out there. So moshing for Jesus. Those that cannot dance, they mosh. <laughs> and so as they're led, and you'll see it in our generation, we didn't really learn how to dance like, like some of you did. And so they, they jump in, and, and as the music leads them, they'll just kind of push each other, and they're slamming into each other, and they're, you know, why on earth would anybody want to do that? But it's a mosh pit, all right? So moshing for Jesus, um, and I thought, what better morning to have this as a reminder that we've come to dance for our Lord, um, and you've come here, you've made it at 9 o'clock, um, again, stretch out, just enjoy the space that's here, and, and know that your mission doesn't end after this service, right? We started it early so that you could get to the restaurants even earlier than our other brothers and sisters. And so you could be there and tell them all about the Lord and then all the love and what love can do and all of that. So really, you are set up. You're our front line. You're our recon. We're sending you out, all right? So it doesn't mean you need to be on the golf course at 10.50, okay? Not at all. You need to go out and do some, some uh, ministry. Hey, one announcement, uh, just in addition, as is, is, uh, Ashley had mentioned, uh, the God of Yes, next Sunday we're going to start it. It'll be a four-week series that we're joining Central. All of our churches across the globe are going to be plugging into the God of Yes. Judd Wilhite, our senior pastor, an amazing man of God, has done um, the, the study on Ecclesiastes. And we're just trying to get into small groups. Because what we found after two and a half, almost three years, is that we really do like each other. Like, we really want to leave Sunday, and we still want to have space to hang out with one another. And we want to hear each other's stories. Because in that is really what the Holy Spirit's doing to bind us up together. So the God of Yes, now the, the, um, the store has done a great thing. They have all the books, and for $15 tax-free, can I get an amen? Uh, that you get the book and a DVD and a study guide to go with it. If you want more information or where our small group offerings are going to be, we have some on Wednesday night. We have some on Sunday morning in between the services. We have some on Saturday. We just wanted to get together and to study the Word and then to hear from one another. So see Ashley um, at the table after the service, and, um, and we'll go from there. Speaking of which, if you were here last Sunday... The, the Ashley and Donna combination was, that was like out of heaven. It was phenomenal. So, little creature. I, I need to, I got, I got messages back. Hey, uh, maybe you could be gone a couple of Sundays a month, you know. Just kind of keep rolling that pattern in. And Donna, thank you for, for those words. It's interesting, we've been doing this love can, and Donna, God put on Donna's heart from the very beginning when we started coming and, and we were just a broken, messy people, which is the same today, by the way, and, and we came together and, and started seeing God form this church, uh, Donna said, hey, we should, we should have love cans. Love cans. We want to make love cans and put them everywhere so that no, no matter what the hurt or the need or whatever it is, we, want to, we wanted people uh, to have a space to be able to drop those. Love can almost three years ago, and here we are joining up and moving through the love can of what we want to see God do as He moves through this community and uses us and sends us out um, to practice His radical grace. It's okay to not be okay. And there are so many folks that need that message. They're just, they're out there longing for the church to embrace them right where they are um, in such a way of grace and not judgment. And so we've heard that, and there we go. And the final piece is, is that although you see Paul um, filming this, if you're coming to 9 o'clock, this is really the uncensored one, because that's not going on YouTube. So I get to say whatever I want. <laughs> so I'm just a little heads up. You might not be ready for that, but this is going to be messier than 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, now we have to get all polished, and everything's worked through, and... They pull me aside and go, Jeremy, you can't really say that because we're going to put that on YouTube. So, so at 9 o'clock, are you guys all right with that? This one's just going to be, man, we're going to go for it and, and rock and roll as we go uh, through the message. We're going to hear from Joel this morning as well. And, and uh, let's, let's, as we go to the Lord in prayer, uh, let's prepare our hearts. God, we thank you for your love. We thank you that 
even when we experience a little bit of it, or maybe the radicality of it, maybe, maybe when it's this overwhelming grace that consumes us, even then, it's just a drop of your eternal grace and love for us. Lord, you pursue us. You never give up. No matter where we are, no matter how many mistakes, no matter how many second and third chances you've given us, you never give up on us. Ever. Nothing separates us from your love. And Lord, we want to embody that as a church. We want to practice that. And uh, maybe, Lord, that, that will be our highest goal is, is your love. Maybe that's what this love can really is. It's just making love our highest goal. Help us to do that. Speak to us and for your word. We're yours on this glorious, glorious morning that you've given to us. It's in your name we pray. And all the brothers and sisters said, Amen. Amen. Hey, do you guys have a... Do you have a junk drawer? How many are just like me and have a junk drawer at the house? I go, like, what is that in our DNA? Like, we're all like, yep, we've all got it. Even those that didn't raise your hands, I know you have a junk drawer, all right? Or it might be the garage, or it might be a room, right? I mean, this, it's, it's this place. I just went through ours, okay, because it's usually, it has a keep out sign on it, right? I mean, every once in a while you open it up and you're just throwing more stuff into it, right? I mean, I look through ours and it is it is scary what was in our junk drawer. Scary. All right, we've got keys to cars that we had like 10 years ago. Like, what? why is that there? Flashlights in case of an emergency, they haven't had batteries in them for at least two years. All right, I was like, oh, does this one work? Does this one? Nothing. You know, we've got, we've got fingernails, clippings from I don't know when, how they get in the drawer. I mean, we made trips across country, and these fingernail clippings made it into our, you know, we just took a box, you know, it's the junk drawer, and you put it in. And the crazy thing about that is that you look at all the other drawers, and I was just kind of stood back, and I was like, well, look at this one. It's ordered. You've got all of our, our wonderful saran wrap and our, and our Ziploc bags. Look at how neatly they're placed here. And this one's got all of our, our rags and, and everything else is ordered, right? What is the deal with the junk drawer? You know, what is that? It just serves no purpose. There's not a purpose to it. And it's, it's almost like it's a freeing thing to have there. And we just have this junk drawer, so we throw everything into it. And I thought, man, that's pretty telling, isn't it? That if I look back in my life, I've had so many years where it's been a junk, a junk drawer. So many more of my years have been this sense of just, it didn't even serve any purpose. I just was just rolling through life. Have you, have you felt that? Have you gone through some of that in your own life? That you feel like, man, I'm just doing this and I'm doing that and I'm stretched and I'm across and I just, I don't have any purpose. And this whole love can, this whole movement we've been talking about is to find the purpose, is the foundation. And here we've been going through 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. Hopefully, guys, you've been memorizing it and putting it on little cards. Just take one of the verses and leave it for your lady. I'm telling you, huge bonus points there, all right? We've been doing it almost five, six weeks now. If you haven't gotten that, good gracious, just go home and try it, all right? Um, I did it for the first time this past week because um, I've been forgetting to do that. But after 13, if you'll go back and look, chapter 14, Paul says this, 14 verse 1. You'll see it there in, in your bulletin. Let love be your highest goal. Let love be your highest goal. That's it. That's simply it. If we've got one thing, if there's anything that we've set up for the new year and for resolutions, or if you've, if traditionally you've come out of the, of the church where you start Lent, you know that started on Wednesday, right? So you have Fat Tuesday to do what? To, to celebrate, to sin, get all that stuff going, and then you, you come in and you get the ashes on your, on your forehead, um, which we did celebrate a little bit in a, in a smaller setting. Um, but you, you, you've made new resolutions or you want to do things or you want to begin to stop doing things, love has to be your highest goal. Because when we make love our highest goal, we'll experience God's greatest purpose for our lives. Did you get that? I mean, when we make love 
Every day we begin to just make love our highest goal, then God's purpose will be experienced. We will live into that. The problem was, as Luke was telling us there in chapter 11, is that he was talking more than any other people that would upset him, that would just put him into this terror. Uh, Christ, it was the Pharisees, it was those that were saying, we've got it all worked out. We're religiously solid. You know, we're living this thing out. We've got it perfect. You guys need to just step in line. Hear what he says there in verse 42. How terrible for you, Pharisees. You give a tenth of your mint and your rue and your garden herbs of all kinds while neglecting justice and love for God. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. If we're going to err on either side, err on grace. You guys get that? Have you experienced those that don't necessarily err on grace, right? Have you experienced those that, that you've gone into community or you've been in a relationship with and they just want you to know how much how much of a mess you are or you've had an employer or you've had a neighbor and by the time you get done spending time with them, you're like, I, I'm not even sure why I was born, really. <laughs> like, I'm a complete waste. Because they are just pounding and hammering and hammering you. They give you all those titles and we're so broken underneath that. And God is going, why do you not understand? I love you more than anything you could possibly imagine. I'm the one to put you together. I love you. You've got to be able to comprehend that from the very beginning. And so it's such a hard thing for us to do as a church. is just to love others as a church. And that's our goal. This is going to be for the next week, for the months, for the years ahead. Anything we do will always be centered in grace first. A radical grace. If we can't lead that way, we don't believe God wants us to do that as a church in His body. That's where what's foundational for us. And what is so neat is we're seeing lives that are changed. We're seeing lives that are completely transformed because of that radical grace that God is using and teaching us to practice through our lives. I wanted you to hear just a small testimony about one who's come and been exposed to that in our Joel Bender. Do you guys know our Energizer Bunny, our man of God right here? Good morning, everybody. You've probably seen me run around here a lot with Johnny and some of our rudder guys helping out. Uh, we, we just love y'all being here. And uh, I'm not a great testimonial guy, but I've got a kind of a story to tell that uh, I hope moves you a little bit because you don't know my past and I don't want to go too deep into it, but I was one of the kind of those guys that, man, was a rocket man. Go fast boats, go fast cars, big houses. A lot of Satan was leading me. I mean, he just had me going all the time. And I thought that what my purpose in life was to do those things. Party down, have a great time. I mean, just go, 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 spin the dough. But what happened to me before I met this church was I woke up one morning on the floor of my office with no furniture, sleeping with a pillow, wondering what has happened. And I mean it. I laid there many a night crying. And let me tell you, begging God to help me. No money, just sitting there, taking showers over here at Gulf Shores and parks. And I mean, it's kind of a tragic story, but you know what happened to me was something unbelievable. I came to this church about six months in, wasn't it, Jeremy? I mean, really broken, man. Looking for answers, okay? And uh, I met this woman over here, Donna. Okay, that's Donna. A lot of love in that lady's heart, folks. A lot of love. If you want to talk to somebody, talk to Donna. I came in here weak, broken. Floor of Anna, church, really. Got a bushwhacker. Right on us, okay? That was my style, okay? And I sat here and I listened to this man over here, who I love. And he kind of grabbed me and moved me. And I said, man, if I feel like this could be where I need to be. You know, maybe God has got me here for some reason. And sure enough, after church, I saw these old chairs over here, these green chairs, okay? We had these nice fold-outs, thanks to Cam and John and the people of Florida, Bama. But what happened was we used to stack those chairs, and I watched John, where's John Mason Smith? Right here, okay? Johnny over here, stacking these chairs, dragging them against that wall, hundreds of them, breaking their backs. And Donna grabbed me and said, can you help? I said, Absolutely. So I grabbed chairs and started moving them over there. And Donna said to me again, hey, can you come back? Come back to the church of the floor of Alabama. Heck, yep, yeah, they got bushwhackers, okay? I'm in, all right? Okay? But anyways, what happened, Donna moved me a lot. She touched me. And she said, look, these guys bust their backs every day to move these chairs. And I thought, you know, I can move chairs. And I like the message that's here. 
I'm going to come back. And I came back. And she said, hey, I'm glad you made it. And she gave me a shirt, okay? A rudder crew shirt. That was pretty cool. We didn't have a big crowd like we do now. But what I did is I found this message moving me. And the message was God. God was telling me, hey, I love you. I want you here. I want you to be part of this church, part of this community. Be a servant to me. And it started to move me unbelievably. My life started to change again. I wasn't as broken as I was. Sure, sure, I had some mess going on, folks. Don't get me wrong, okay? I was still a little messy, okay? But I came here, and I prayed with the road crew. And I started to see my heart get bigger. More joy was coming into my life. Little successes were happening. I mean, I lost a lot of things, folks, okay? A lot of stuff. And I never thought I'd get back on my feet because my priorities were wrong. God wasn't my priority. Loving God wasn't my priority. And yes, that's hard right now. We all have problems in our lives. There's issues that we have. There's that junk drawer that Jeremy talked about. I still have that junk drawer to some extent. But what I found, when I put God first, things happened to me that were miracles, little miracles. My son, that I wasn't seen very often, started to call me and say, Hey, Dad, come and get me. Come see me. These people had done me, okay? My family had said, go away, okay? You're a loser. You're gone. You're done, okay? And so, again, my other kids, my adult kids and their grandkids, I didn't care to want to see anymore, started to come around. And people like Donna started to hold my hand each Sunday and say, hey, I love you. Glad you're here again. My business, okay? I'm, I'm probably one of the weirdest business, aren't I, Jeremy? I sell cars, okay? <laughs> Never thought I would sell cars. I'm sorry. But there I am. And I love it, okay? Because what I saw was another purpose. It allowed me to financially to give back to this church to help this community that I'm in. And so these things started to grow. And the neat thing is as I started to go to church here, and you have a, uh, I have a beautiful wife, okay? I don't know if you've seen Holly. But next thing happened to me, I thought I'd never have a relationship. I was burned. I was scared. But I was very scared of this woman because she's incredible. She's not here. She'll be here at 11. But uh, I, I just met eyes with her one day at church here. And I was like, wow, she's beautiful. And I was pretty scared. I had to go to Johnny over here, my, my buddy, and say, Johnny, who is this chick? Okay, I want to know about her, okay? She comes to church every Sunday and she's blowing me away. And sure enough, Johnny says, that's Holly. I said, okay. So I got my, my nerve up, you know. I'm a little bit shady, scared, all these things going on. And I asked her out. Uh, she said yes. Okay, so we went out and we had a great time and we really fell in love. But you know what? She had some junk in her drawer too. And we started to get excited, you know, and, and love, you know, and, and love is an amazing thing. You, you get really romantic fast, you jump into it, you, whoo, you know, and you leave her that night at home and you go back to your work and you see her four or five days later and it's romance again and exciting. But then you start to see the junk drawer come out on both of you, okay? You know what I mean? You see little things that I do wrong and she does wrong. And so we had to work through that. And I'm going to tell you, we had our problems and issues too. We broke up. I called Jeremy. I said, I broke up with Holly. You know, what happened here, okay? I'm in tears, okay? Jeremy says, it's all right. Let's talk. And we'd come to church and she'd sit over there and I'd sit over there, okay? Hey, I'm over here, all right? You're over there. So, you know, again, we had problems. But what was neat about it is I, I said to God, I prayed to God, I said, look, Lord, you know, I, I really love this woman, okay? I feel for her. And she did the same. And so we started to go to counseling with Jeremy. And you got to have those things. you got to get the junk out, okay? you got to get the messiness out. Why? Because you're going to have it for the rest of your life. All right? It's going to be there at one extent, one death, whatever it is. But if you put God first again as a priority in your relationship and everything that you do, what happens is you overcome the messiness, okay, the brokenness. And so what happened is Holly and I started to overcome those things and see how important we were. And we're so excited, this last summer, Holly and I got married right here at the church. Okay, I know some of you were here, okay, right on the beach. My good friend Jeremy was there. And what I loved about that is we got married in God's eyes, okay? And that was very important. So my message here today is, you know, if you are broken, messy, you've you got to admit it a little bit. But the most important thing is love can. God, love God with all your heart, your mind, your body, your soul. Put Him first, okay? Because He loves you. Alright? He does love you. And if you're having issues and problems, talk to Him. If you need help within this church, talk to us. Because we want to see you get rid of the junk and the messiness and the broken heartedness. Because you're going to have it. Alright? I don't care if it's death, loss, financial problems. They're going to be. That element's always going to be in our life. But put Him, the priority, God, and love God, 
And He'll love you back and you'll see the joys. You'll see the excitement come back in your life. And that's what I had done. I mean, I've got a beautiful wife, a beautiful family here. I'm feeling good about myself. And that's very important for me because I'm high energy and I've got to feel good. Okay? But do. Love can do everything for you if you just think about it. Okay? And put God first. Jerry, that's all I want to say. Okay? Thank you, everybody. All right? Mm. Wow. So, Match.com has nothing on Worship on the Water. I'm just saying. It is, uh, love is moving. And Joel leads us right in. That that's, as we do this as a church, and thank you, brother, for that testimony, as we do it as love as a church is centered in everything we do, what it leads us to is, is this greatest commandment. When, when they had Christ on the ropes, a, a teacher of law and one who was very well known and practicing his faith, he just wanted, they pushed Jesus over and he tested him. He said, so what's, what's the, what is the greatest thing? What's the highest? I want to know the number one thing I have to do. What is that? And there were, there were you know, 600 some odd things in the Shema back then. These things that the, of the law that they would practice. They'd do things on, they couldn't do anything on Sabbath. Or they, if they were stepping forward this way, they couldn't go by somebody that, that had uh, blood or anything there because they couldn't worship properly. And they, I mean, they had it memorized and they were living it out. But they pulled Christ into the corner and they said, well, what, what's the greatest? What's, what is it? And this is how he responded in Matthew. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. Love. Highlight it. Underline it. There it is. Right there. And, and, and he went on to say, and the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. That's it. Those are it. If we get anything else wrong, we've got to get this right. And part of this love can is, is that we step back, we came into a relationship with Central, and we prayed and we discerned and we said, hey, this is what we've been about, radical grace. And they helped us and we've been discerning this. And they said, well, this is, this is where we think God's leading us and maybe this is for you. I want you to take out the love can card. Um, you'll see it there. Now, if you're visiting and you're heading out, uh, this is this is not one of those where, oh my gosh, you know, every time I go to church, they talk about money. All right, so this isn't really for you. All right, this this money piece, and you just go ahead and think about what you're going to do the rest of the day. But this this love can commitment card. We don't want we don't want these back today. What we're giving you is this to take and to pray over. Uh, throughout the week, next Sunday, we'll have an, uh, an opportunity where we'll come forward and lay these at the altar for God. But the commitment card, there's three things that we want to be a part of as we continue to be the body of Christ. That we believe that love can help us as a church and help us love our neighbor as ourselves. And that's, that's one. The very first part is to grow our hearts to reach more people for Christ. And that starts very simply. You'll see there in the very first part, Please list the names of the individuals you plan to reach out to through Love Can. Now when you give these names and you write these and you're prayerfully discerning them and kind of understanding who those people are, uh, my hunch is if you don't know your neighbors, it's probably one of them. All right, anybody that, you know, you're kind of, they, they, they kind of bring out the worst in you, they probably need to be on your prayer list. Um, for some of you, you've never even done this. So this will be the biggest step for you. We're just asking uh, somebody to take that first step. But we want you to write down their names because we want to be in prayer with you over them. So that's the first step is that we think in the next couple years that God is going to grow our hearts to reach more people for Christ. Uh, flip over there. Love Can is also about growing our sacrifice to see God do a greater work through us. What we want to do is be so mindful of every dollar that is given it's His money. What we promised you is not to, do, to use that in building buildings. Are you guys all right up with that? We're not going to build buildings. We're not going to buy carpet. We're not going to do a stained glass. We're not going to have an organ. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right, so all of those funds are now freed up to be kingdom-based. And so maybe some of you haven't even talked about a tithe or what that means for, for you to give as a family. It's a very biblical piece 
um, just pray through that. Um, and maybe you haven't even done a regular giving or you like to just kind of drop it in. Stay with that. Wherever God leads you is really where you're going to go. The second part to this is, is the love can. When you mark down, this is where I want these funds to go over the next two years. Those specific funds are going to be utilized for the one biggest part we think God wants us to do out here right now. And that's fight addiction. We believe God wants us to leverage everything that we're about to help fight addiction. To meet people in the midst of the brokenness and the darkest of hours in and through addiction. And also their family and loved ones that have been broken because of that addiction. We want to stamp out addiction across this area. Um, is, is that worthy? Is that okay? Do you guys hear God kind of telling you that and some of that? Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's what we want. That's what we believe God is saying love can do. So any funds that are generated that way, they will specifically go for our battle against addiction and how that is. So just, just stretching our sacrifice. For Elise and I, at, at different points in our lives, that's meant different things. At one point, she heard God saying we needed to adopt another child. I, I said, no, I think you're not hearing God at all in that, all right? And, and lo and behold, two children later, you know, she's like, well, I, I told you what God said. So um, stretch and, and just lay that, lay that. Put that in the Bible and let God just really speak. And the final piece to this is that we want, we want God to grow our relationship with Christ to a higher level of maturity. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that if you're coming and you're enjoying the church and you're participating here, awesome. We love that. That's been a step for you. But we've highlighted some other opportunities that will allow you to take another step. A first step gathering. We're going to do that in May. Uh, where we're going to come together and we're going to celebrate. And we're going to meet off away from the floor of Bama. And we're going to eat together. And we're going to pray together. And we're going to take you through a, a process of just kind of discerning what your gifts are. What's your passion? God brought you here for a reason. Every single one of you are gifted uh, in many different ways. And we need to understand what those gifts and passions are so you can take that first step in serving. As Joel said, for him, he was the Energizer Bunny. He's going to still do some chairs and be a part of that, of that program there. But what God is doing is stretching him and leading he and Holly into other leadership roles in their passion areas. So first step, join a small group. We have two Bible studies. An all-ladies Bible study that meets over in the Yacht Club. Wonderful, amazing. They're starting a new study, the Daniel study. Phenomenal um, on Sunday mornings. You can make it because I'm going to get you out in time to go right over there if you would like. Um, grab some Waffle House and still do your evangelism on the way, okay? But you can go over and make it there. We have another Bible study upstairs. So we just want you to join a small group um, and begin to kind of connect with your brothers and sisters because that's what the Holy Spirit wants. And then to start serving. If you just want to start serving and you don't even know how that is, if you mark that box, we'll have a team that will contact you. Um, or become an owner. If you want to be a part of what God is doing here. Now, we didn't call it membership because we, we, want, we believe that God, when He gives us this love and we finally say yes to it, He now wants us to own it. And part of ownership is what? It's practicing and then beginning to do it out there. If you own, you are now in it. You are invested. And so if you want to just join this and be a part of this, phenomenal. Um, if you want to be baptized in part of that piece, then we, we work that in. What can love do? So this is really your prayer card. As the band makes their way back up, um, we, we are going to send you forth as a fly away. But we want you to, again, if you're a visitor and you're like, hey, I've got my body of Christ and it's wonderful, um, please just leave the card. That's fine. Um, if you're one of our snowbirds, I know for some of our snowbirds, we love you, by the way. Don't we love our brothers and sisters who are our Amen. snowbirds? Man, we're going to miss you. We are going to miss you. Uh, I've already heard that some of your wings are clipped, so some of you are actually looking at buying houses here, and I think that's very biblical. All right? You stay out of Minnesota, and you stay down here eight, eight <laughs> more months out of the year, however that works. So, but, you know, part of our relationship with you, feel free, you can connect with us as well. Uh, take it home, be in prayer over it. If you forget to bring this back next Sunday, we'll have some more for you, okay? Um, but let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we just lay this before Him. Gracious God, man, how incredible that is when we make love our highest goal. That every single time when we wake up and say, let this day be about your love. 
what happens is, is we begin to fulfill the one thing that you said should trump everything else, and that's love. It's a radical, insanely incredible love that, that we can't even comprehend at times. Um, but you ask us to do that over and over and over again. What, what can love do? Help us to reach more folks. Oh, they're just brothers and sisters. We're fishers of men and women. Um, teach us what that looks like. Help us to grow our sacrifices. Um, and that all that we have is really yours. Um, so what does that mean for us to leverage that in our fight against addiction and our movement forward? Uh, what does it mean to just take a step, to, to, to go that next step of growing closer to you and closer to, to this body, your brothers and sisters, as we need to be more like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, these, these cards, we know that your Spirit has been over them and through them, anoint them. Uh, might they touch our lives as we take them forth this day. We love you, Lord. Uh, we worship you. We're yours. Use us. What can love do? In your name we pray. Amen. Don't pick up the chairs. <laughs> Leave them. Go to a study group. Go eat with each other. Y'all have a good time. Okay? But this is the end song, so y'all can stand up now. Y'all have to go somewhere or else. <laughs> so glad.